Wes, a lot of the numbers look pretty good, but it kind of felt like you guys lost control on offense uh, in certain stretches. What did you think of the offense tonight? No, that's true. I, you know, we talked about it after the uh, game. There were at least three stretches where we go two and a half, three minutes where we, we get outscored. So we made plays late, kind of to your point, saw the uptick in the numbers, but uh, those stretches were hurtful. Obviously, third quarter, we struggled. And they only able to muster 17 points. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where when those moments happen, you know, we were getting good looks, and I think it kind of gets frustrating when those don't go down. Uh, and we can't, let, we can't allow that to affect the other end of the floor. How much did their defense on Harrell kind of shake things up for you guys? Oh, they, they, they played well. I have to give them credit. Um, we knew they were going to come in with the a level of intensity, uh, physicality. And we saw that. They were, they were attacked. They were downhill. And that, that probably led to a lot of those uh, free throw attempts. They, they were the aggressors. And whether they're fouls or no fouls, but, you know, that's, they, they had that aggressive mentality. So uh, we didn't match that tonight. Coach, what's your assessment on how your team defended uh, against Trey, Trey Young? At times, good. Uh, and at other times, I think we weren't as locked in as we should be. Uh, there were some coverage mistakes, some communication mistakes. Uh, overall, the effort was good, but you know, I think we have to make sure to take those uh, those plays out because those are momentum plays, and I think they they hurt us. We're making a bit of a run, you know. Why, Overhelp, give up a corner three. You know, so th those type things we have to eliminate. How did Daniel look tonight in terms of his mobility? No, his he looks great. Point? I think just his, you know, got winded, uh, which was to be expected, and obviously picked up the fouls, which, which hurt his uh, his minutes a bit. But overall, he was moving great. He was active and bouncy. So I like I like what I saw. What's any sort of uh, preliminary report you've gotten about Davis? And, and I haven't heard anything specific. I don't think it's anything other than a sprain, but uh, I'll wait to see before you know commenting. Well, so what you make of the Hawks? They had twenty. There were twenty nine or twenty nine on the foul line. What make of them getting so many attempts from the line? Yeah, to, to that point, I think they were they were very aggressive. They, they were in attack mode the whole night. Um, you know, you could argue that you know. We were aggressive as well, but they got a, the benefit of the whistle. So, you know, to, to their credit, they got to the line and they made made all of them. I, mean, I think we were 16 of 16. So, good overall free throw night, but uh, the volumes, we got to do a better job defending without foul. So, uh, it's got to be a priority for us. Wes, you kind of talked about the frustration when you guys go through those stretches. I, I guess with this game and the Brooklyn game, what do you feel like you know now about how how you can pull out of those stretches? Because there were there were better stretches in yeah. between those times. No, I thought the difference between this and Brooklyn uh, was still the shots we generated. Uh, they were better looks, they were quality looks. They just didn't go in, uh, and that's just the nature of the game. You know, it's you can generate the right type of shot at the right time. Uh, you don't make it, you know doesn't change anything. But the fact that Brooklyn, we kind of settled, got stagnant, uh, fell into the, just their switching and played a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. And I thought the ball moved. I think we had 27 assists, 26 assists. So we still got great opportunities. We just, you know, failed to connect. Chase. Hi, Wes. Um, Trez didn't make his first shot until late in the first half. He ended up getting going uh, later, but what do you think was different in the first half? It just wasn't the, the player that we've seen in recent games. I think part of it is the impact he's had over the last few games. It's, you know, putting people on notice. So they're going to concentrate probably a little bit more on uh, his ability, you know, to, whether it's attacking, getting to the rim, getting fouled, uh, the offensive rebounds. Uh, I think they know going in, he has an impact. They're going to try to negate that by being physical and, and meeting him with force. When it comes to Brad's uh, three-point shooting so far this season, it, are you guys generating the looks that you want him to take and they're just not falling? Or do you think um, you would you like to see him take different types of threes? Well, for the most part, I'm, I'm pleased with what the shots that were generated. Um, you know, I think it's just a matter of time. I've said it before. He's going to have those nights. He had a tough night, but, you know, good players, great offensive players, they find a way. Uh, and I think he'll, he'll find his way out of it. 
Neil. Hey, Coach, how much do you think the problem with some of the three-point defense was, you know, just getting sucked in and, you know, one guy helping a little bit too much off his guy and then giving up open looks? I think a lot of it was that, um, you know, whether it was pick and roll, you know, we get caught sometimes in no man's land. So when we're never back in front, we don't get the ball under control, that help has to hold a little longer. And when that happens, it just generates long closeouts open threes or it, it, it ignites those driving gaps that turn into driving kicks. So it, it wasn't just all pick and roll. Some of it was transition. Uh, some of it was just one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so it was a number of things, but, you know, I think it's, it's once again, a priority. It starts at the point of attack. And so going forward from this game, how do you go about just, you know, sending out film to the players? Is it something you guys do in group settings? Obviously you guys don't necessarily have as much, you know, time together back and forth. Yeah, it's a lot of film. Um, you know, we'll walk through some scenarios on, you know, on the floor. It's it's tough sometimes to, to, to have bodies to, to practice. So we have to use whatever resource we have. You know, the film is a great resource. Being able to just walk through situations and, and talk through positioning, um, the communication dynamic, uh, we can do all those things. So uh, we'll have to, you know, kind of look at where we are, what we did uh, tonight, and uh, try to correct it. Thanks, Coach. Safe travels back. Thank you. Last question to Wayne. Hey, Coach, we talked pregame about just the challenges of playing the team so quick with back-to-back -back nights. What did you see different from this Hawks squad against you guys uh, this night compared to the first time you played? Well, both teams were on a second night of a back-to-back. -back. Uh, I thought they played with greater energy. Uh, and we talked about that before the game. You know, as a group, we knew they were going to come out, you know, with a degree of force. I think they felt that they let one get away, you know, in D.C. So we knew after you know, they took a loss to Philly the way they did, they were going to come out with a sense of urgency. Uh, you know, we missed a lot of plays early. I thought we first half pretty good, you know, had that lull in the second. But uh, we knew they were going to come out and, and try to put us away early. We were able to hang on uh, in third quarter was kind of got the, got away from us a bit. And same thing with after the loss to Brooklyn, the team responded really well. Just tell me what you're looking for in this next game coming up with the Raptors. I mean, a, a similar in kind. I think, you know, it's been kind of our mindset, you know, going in. Losses are going to happen. We have to learn from, correct certain things, and try not to repeat uh, those, those same mistakes. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll recenter ourselves, get ourselves going, and then respond in kind. Yeah, all in all, I felt good, you know, just finally being back out on the floor. You know, I've, I've missed it. Um, that's just pretty much that. The movement was great. You know, I was jumping, blocking shots. I mean, I felt natural out there. Um, the win is going – the win, my win is going to be better, you know, throughout my process of getting back in the flow of the game. But other than that, all in all, I felt good. Was that the – you've worked on kind of limiting the fouls and everything so far. Was that part of just getting back into it and being back out there? Yeah, I mean – you know, just being in the wrong place at the wrong time and, you know, making stupid decisions. That's just all in all a mental a mental mistake. And I'm going to learn from it for sure. And just try to be better at it next game. Daniel, what did you think were the key things that uh, led to the, to the loss tonight? Um, Really just, you know, letting them throw the first punch and we're not throwing any punches back. Uh, that I would say that's the main that's the main thing that was said throughout the locker room. Um, just every trip down, you know, down the floor, they got something. We came down, we missed a shot, and it's like our heads were down. So, you know, those are the main things. We just have to stay together as a team to be able to withstand each stretch that we go. You know, the team is going to make runs on us. We have to be able to be in a, put us put ourselves in a position to where we can come out and do the same thing to them. You know, can't just let go of the rope. We got to keep tugging. Chase. Hey, Daniel. Um, how bad was the injury? It, it looked like you were in a lot of pain uh, a week ago. And, and for you to come back this quickly, I think uh, probably surprised a lot of people. Um, all the, just in general, it, it was tough. I mean, I, I've never, the only time I've had an injury like anywhere around my quad is like in my hip. That's the main thing. Um, so it was the first time for me having that injury, like a quad contusion. So it was all new for me, but all in all the pain, you know, I would say it was about at a seven or eight, you know, I just wanted to take my time to be able to come back and be in the right, you know, physical 
conditioned to be able to come back and play. Neil. And Daniel, coach has been talking a little bit about, you know, wanting to improve the paint defense. Obviously, you know, that's something where you can contribute in moving forward as you continue to get back up to speed. Has there been anything on film or anything that you've picked out and said, okay, this is maybe something that I can do well or adjust to? Um, really just my main thing is communicating better, you know, communicating early and communicating loud to where the guards know what's going on behind them. Um, I've always had time and time again to where I made mistakes to where I'm not talking loud enough or I'm not talking early enough for the guards when it comes to like pick and roll, when it comes to being a low man, protecting the basket, certain things like that. So the main thing for me is just being able to be more vocal, being able to help my teammates out, you know, let them know what's behind me and help myself out at the same time. Because, I mean, if I talk early enough, I don't get those stupid fouls that I got tonight. Thanks, Daniel. Safe travels back. Thank you. Wayne. Hey, Daniel, uh, despite the injury, you came back and played a good game. Can you just talk to me about some of the positives you liked uh, that you did tonight? Um, really just not dwelling on making little mistakes. You know, I turned I, if I turned the ball over, not dwelling on that. You know, the um, shot attempt that I tried on the basket, and I got caught up on the backboard, not really just thinking about that. Um, just really just focusing on the next play if I ever mess up you know, trying to get it back on defense or trying to get a better shot on offense, you know, certain things like that and trying to slow the game down for myself. That was just the main thing. And tonight I tried to do all that in my first game being back. <clears throat> Not um, just really just using me coming back this first night as an excuse or anything. But, you know, I learned from my mistakes. I'm just going to be better the next game. And the same thing I asked Coach about, you know, the challenges and advantages of playing the team back-to-back uh, -back so early. Can you just speak on what they did this game compared to the first time you all played them? Um, really just they upped their intensity, I feel like. You know, we had great intensity at our place, and they did the same thing here. Uh, hey, their job was to protect home, and that's what they did tonight. We came out, we took that punch, and we kind of took steps back, when, um, so to speak. So main thing that we, I would say, just wasn't ready for was just the energy they came out playing with, especially in the second half because we added down to, I would say, three or five, and they came out, and they played way better basketball than what we were. Hey, thanks, Dan. Safe travels, man. Mm -hmm. You got to stay hungry. That's the main thing. You got to stay greedy. You can't really just, you know, get too full of success that we have early in the season because we have a real long season ahead of us. Taking it one game at a time, doing the right things in those games. That are, those are the main, like I would say, points that you know we really have to focus on. Kind of the biggest um, black spots were tonight. Uh, first person I learned to say was Jesus Christ. Uh, I think the biggest thing is we didn't sustain their runs. You know, they had a couple runs where they went on uh, on the defensive end. We just couldn't stop them. They were making a lot of threes. They got a lot of paint touches, and they ended up getting some offensive rebounds. We did a good job in the first game of stopping them and uh, limiting them to one shot. Tonight, they were they were all over the glass a little bit. They were very active. Uh, their guards even got in there, got some. Um, so I would just say that we had a lot of empty possessions during their run. So they would go 9-0 run, 5-0 run, and we, we cracked the lead down to five. And then next thing you know, you look up at it, it's 15 again. So it was just sustaining those runs, I think. You had that really big second quarter. What was different in the second half? Was it defense that they were doing, or did you feel like it was something that you were working out? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I was definitely aggressive in the first half. Um, second half, it was we didn't move the ball as much as we should have. Uh, we weren't moving bodies, uh, and then we when we turned the ball over, I had a lot tonight too. You know, when we turn the ball over, it doesn't it doesn't benefit us. You know, we have to get a shot up every time, uh, and then when we're always you know setting our defense and you know not getting out in transition, it makes it tougher too. So we we're playing in half court a lot versus playing fast, which is what we want to do. Um, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it does seem like when you guys have had these two losses, it, it, they're very much things that are in your control. Like the numbers don't look terrible tonight or anything yeah. like that. Is that, I guess, how does that change a locker room's response to a, a loss like this? Uh, that's the beneficial part of it. You know, you don't, we don't accept moral victories, but you look at the numbers and you're like, okay, well, we did, we did solid in a few categories. We had them to some, you know, smaller percentages, uh, you know, and then, Overall, we, we still had chances to win.
know, but we just kind of dug ourselves a hole a few times and we couldn't get out of it, you know. So it's six game in and, you know, we six, seven game in. Now we just, we just we're still gelling, you know, it's not we really perfect, but, you know, we're still figuring out. We can't just snap it. We can't just flip on the light switch and turn it on. We got to be ready to go, you know, especially coming off of their loss last night. We knew that they were going to come in here energetic, so. You are indeed seven games in. What's your assessment of how far along the team is in terms of building that uh, chemistry, that understanding of what the coaches want and the familiarity with a bunch of new teammates? Uh, we've made tremendous strides, you know, it's, and it's still a work in progress. It's not perfect. We still have a lot that we need to work on and get better at uh, on both ends of the floor. And I'm sure coach probably feels the same way uh, as well. You know, we just have to continue to build and get better every day. You know, don't look too far ahead. Don't look back, you know, uh, build on every day and just get better. You know, we understand in our first 10 games against all playoff teams, you know, they're against tough teams and we've been, we've been holding our own and competing, you know, so that's, that's one end of it. You know, you look at the personnel we have and the guys we have and the versatility have, we have, and it's, it's remarkable, but we still gotta, we gotta put those, those gelling pieces together uh, betterly and more consistently. You just alluded to this, but when you look at what this team might become, what uh, do you see that makes you think that this is a sustainable start? Uh, I mean, just cause the type of guys we have, everybody's a good character guy. Everybody wants to win. Everybody has a great attitude about contributing to the team. Uh, and like I said, our versatility propels us in that just in just the realm of the game. Like it just makes a lot of things easier for us on the floor. Uh, and it creates a lot of mismatches for us too. Um, so we just have to be better at understanding those reads, uh, executing better on both ends of the floor and getting stops. I mean, we our first five, six wins were all because of defense. You know, we got those wins. We grinded those wins out because of our defense. You know, we didn't do that tonight. Brad, how do you keep the things that you mentioned tonight that went wrong? How do you keep those from becoming bad habits? Uh, now, I mean, you just snip them in the bud now. Granted, uh, we've shown some consistency, but we've had the mental lapses where we won't do it. But I mean, we're human. You know, we're going to make mistakes. But as long as we're making aggressive mistakes and, you know, we're communicating along the way, I think Coach will live with some of the things that, you know, may or may not go right on the floor. But, uh, you know, if we're not communicating, we're not going hard, he's obviously – Nobody's going to accept that, you know, so just making sure that we're always bought in and locked in and, and that our focus is getting better and winning the day, whatever it takes. Chase. Hey, Brad, uh, how good was it to have Daniel back in the lineup tonight? That was great. One, just uh, anytime anybody's healthy, you know, it's always beneficial for he and, and for the squad. Uh, but I'm definitely happy for him just to be able to be back on the floor. Nobody likes being out. Nobody likes missing time with the team. Uh, but it was, it was good to have his presence back, his athleticism. I feel like he couldn't get to play a lot tonight. Uh, but, you know, when he was out there, he was being impactful as best he could. And there was some talk uh, leading up to the season um, by Coach Unseld about generating different three-point looks for you, trying to get more catch-and-shoot opportunities and stuff like that. Have you liked the, the looks that you have had this season? And, and is it kind of a matter of just time that over time that they'll, they will fall? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's an adjustment, I guess. Uh, I just play basketball. I'm not just going to be a, a one dimensional guy and be a straight pin down guy or be a just straight off ball guy. You know, I'm, I can do both. So, you know, coach puts me in those positions to do both. And I've made it a conscious effort that I'm going to shoot more threes this year. You know, so it's just a matter of them falling. I don't think I think everybody around the league is kind of struggling right now, so I don't feel too bad. All right, last question, Neil. Hey, Brad. Along those same lines of you know the entire league kind of you know scoring is down, free throws is down, three point shooting is down. The points of emphasis that officials have tried to put in. How have you seen that play out? You know, so far early in the season. Uh, I don't mind it, you know, as long as it's consistent on both ends of the floor. You know, I don't, I don't mind it at all. I love the fact it's a little bit more physical. Uh, I do, however, think it affects me a little bit more. I think I seen a stat the other day that I'm probably the, I think I'm number one with free throw attempts from last year, in terms of it going down. Like, it's kind of weird in a lot of ways because uh, I don't necessarily play to draw fouls. Uh, but it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment for everybody. So in that regard, I don't. I don't feel bad about it. You know, it's it's uh, it's definitely tough shooting one free throw tonight, but I'm going to continue to attack and be aggressive uh, and force the refs to call it. But 
I mean, the rules are the rules. You know, I don't – I love them, actually, so. you feel like went wrong tonight? Oh, um, I mean, obviously, they had that run in the uh, third quarter, first, like, six minutes or so. We got down. Um, got to come out of the locker room with, you know, just better attention to detail, focus, energy, whatever you want to call it, but just can't have a run like that to start the third quarter, especially after we'd already went down and fought back to cut to three. Um, it's easy to draw comparisons because there are only two losses, but do you feel like there were some of the similar kind of mistakes that were cropping up as what happened in Brooklyn or no? Um, a little bit, but these are two completely different teams. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, we definitely control our own destiny a lot of ways, though, which if you're looking for a bright spot, I would say that's it. It's not like any team has really came out and imposed their will to a, to a point where we just couldn't, you know what I'm saying, do anything with them. Is that almost, I guess, encouraging that it is kind of still in your guys' hands? It's not like it wasn't anything you couldn't fight? Yeah, I mean, that's, if we're looking to be positive, then yeah. I mean, it's a loss and a not great one at that, but yeah. Now that your team is seven games in and is about to head home for a homestand, I'm curious, what you what do you see that, that leads you to think that this start is, is something that's sustainable and can continue over the next long haul? Well, I mean, I think um, we found ways to win, uh, which is the mark of a good team. Uh, we, we gutted out uh, wins. I think um, we played defense fairly well for the most part. And I think, uh, you know, being a new group, not having the same type of uh, cohesiveness and chemistry as teams that have been together a long time, uh, bodes well for us because we're going to continue to get better in that area. And then um, I think, obviously, uh, myself and Brad have, you know, another level to, to go to. I mean, he's talked about free throws and shooting and things uh, league-wide being down. I think, uh, you know, as we pick that up, that'll be uh, good for our group as well. Chase. Hey, man. Um, Wes said he thought that the Hawks defended Trez a little bit differently tonight, as if they uh, you know, were adjusting to how well he started this season. Do, uh, what did you notice that was different about how their coverages were against him? Um, I mean, I have to go back and look to see how they guarded Trez specifically, I think. Um, you know, what they did is they tried to pull their big up, impact the ball um, as best they could. And, uh, you know, when, when Trez did get the ball, I think they tried to swarm him because obviously, uh, you know, putting one guy on him down there after he catches the pocket pass, uh, he's, he's super effective. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's what I saw mostly. Neil. Spencer, you had a high number of assists today. What were you able to see and, you know, take advantage of the Hawks defense where, you know, getting your teammates more involved um, was a positive for you guys? Yeah, again, I mean, like I said, they, they brought the big up high. Uh, you know, the way I was taught the game is as a PG, like when you get two on the ball, you did your job. So from there, it's all about making the right reads. I was fortunate enough to make some good reads. Um, and, you know, sometimes now it's going to come down to the assist, it's going to come down to, you know, the swing, swing hockey assist. But you know, after you get two on the ball, it's kind of your job as a PG to just kind of get off it and, and try to make the best play possible. Thanks, Spencer. No problem. Wayne. Hey, Spencer. Uh, when you guys played the Raptors on Wednesday, this would be the third time you've seen the team twice. Can you just talk about the advantages and disadvantages of that uh, in such a short start of the season? Um, I, mean, I guess the advantage is, like, you know, when you play a team a bunch of times, you – get a chance to learn, work on yourself, uh, get a lot of film on them. The disadvantage is, uh, you know, it's a consistent look. I think obviously there's 30 teams, well, not I think, but there are 30 teams in the league. So there's a lot of varied, uh, you know, play styles and, and you can kind of get locked into one style of basketball, playing the same team over and over.